is there's a, a, a pretty much a new and growing field called implementation science. The recognition that we understand a lot in science, we have social science, scientists who talk about working with communities, but the actual process of how you go about translating that science into implementation is a relatively new field, that there's quite a lot of work going on within health departments, within um, universities looking at how to make sure that we can do that translation. And so part of what we're talking about in terms of disaster risk management and climate change implementation is really around implementation science. How do we make that happen? I don't need to tell you the Pacific is very large. And so the second question we had was how do we narrow this down a bit? And so based on some excellent discussions I had in a meeting in Guam with Moses of hearing of particular challenges of the US affiliated ocean states, and I understand from Virginia, it's also true for the UK affiliated ocean states, is they're in a real bind. They have the same vulnerabilities as the rest of the Pacific Islands, but they don't have access to the international funds. So they can't go and get the kind of funding that's going to be available to other countries as they apply to, for example, the Green Climate Fund. And so part of this context is recognizing that all of the ocean states are vulnerable. They're all particularly vulnerable, but the ones that are affiliated with the, with the large OECD countries have got an even larger challenge when they don't have access to the kinds of ex external support that people find in other countries. And the third part of the context was building partnerships, that this is what East-West Center is really excellent at, and we want to help make sure that we facilitate these partnerships as we address the immense challenges that will be faced by ocean states over coming decades. And with that, Nancy, it's your turn. Well, aloha. I will put on my professor voice. It's really a pleasure to be here with all of you. I know many of you, and I know others of you by name. And um, I'd like to thank the Aspen Global Change Institute and John and the entire team for make, facilitating this. And of course, my partners in crime, both Henry and Chris, as we arrange this. As Richard had indicated, the East West Center is very committed to the Pacific. And I just note at this point that actually some of the very first work done on disasters in the Pacific Islands was published through the East West Center in the early 1980s um, by John Connell and Mike Campman. And uh, Mike will be around later in this meeting. Um, I'm Nancy Lewis. We're going to ask all of you to introduce yourself, so I'll give you a sense of what you're, what you're supposed to include. Uh, I'm an adjunct senior fellow here at the East West Center and an emeritus UH professor. I stepped down as the director of research here in August, and I'm flunking retirement. Um, before that, I was a geography professor and associate dean at the University of Hawaii, and I've been working in the Pacific for the last... I don't even want to know how many years it is, since the late 1970s, on health and environmental issues, and most recently on climate change, disaster risk reduction, and gender in the Pacific. Um, my job is to tell you a little bit about the agenda, which of course you have before you. The week is really packed. Um, we're addressing climate change and human health in the Pacific context, pre preparing for extreme weather and its relation to health, Experiences from the Pacific, both the North Pacific and the South Pacific, health adaptation to climate change, and the integration of climate change adaptation and disaster risk management. And then on Thursday afternoon and Friday, we will be having the lunch and the breakout sessions for us to talk about where we're going with this and what this is all going to mean. While we do have this structure, we really understand that it's important to maintain flexibility and fluidity and to take advantage of all your experiences and expectations. We appreciate that you've got very busy schedules and are giving us a significant amount of your time. And we really want you to leave this meeting with, with something that's useful for you. So be that lessons learned, best practices, foundations for con continued shared learning. And so that, to that end, you're going to see some little orange sticky notes on the table. And after our introductions at the break, we would like you to write down one or two ideas of what you would like to go home with, what would be useful for you. And then we, the organizing committee, will take a look at those and organize them and see how that might 
influence our agenda as we move forward. So you can put your sticky notes up here on the green blackboard and uh, we will try to make some sense of them. So I'm really pleased to be with you here this week. And again, welcome to Hawaii in the East West Center. Henry? Well, good morning and aloha um, as well. And uh, I uh, <clears throat> purposely got myself as the third of the three organizers to speak because I knew that everything that needed to be said will have been said by then, so I, I wouldn't have to do much. But um, I, I do want to thank the East West Center. Uh, uh, it really, it, 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 it didn't make any sense to have, to, if we were going to have a meeting uh, in, w with this subject matter, which uh, originally I had, I had uh, thought about the entire small island states in the tropics, you know, so when, when I first started uh, thinking about it and putting together, you know, a document that I could uh, send to John for uh, possible funding. Um, uh, you know, I, I suggested to him, you know, well, if we're going to have a, a meeting with a focus on small island states, but particularly, you know, maybe with a focus on the Pacific, it, you know, it made sense to have it in, uh, in Honolulu at the East West Center rather than in, in, in Aspen, Colorado, you know. So, uh, I've, you know, always had, uh, uh, you know, I've had a lifelong interest in, in uh, I'm a climate scientist by training and but with a lifelong interest in the connections between uh, the information that's being generated, the, uh, the knowledges that are being generated by the science and the uh, impact or the human dimensions aspects of uh, climate change and global change. So, um, in, in 2016, uh, I helped organize the, the conference on the, this, this uh, partnership, uh, public health partnership co uh, conference that took place in September of 2016. And um, the, that particular meeting had, had arose because um, I, had, I had started to get involved with a group of uh, uh, doctors, particularly uh, the, uh, in, in the renal uh, uh, segment of, of the uh, School of Medicine at the University of Colorado in Denver. And they had been uh, yeah, finding that there was this uh, huge increase in the number of uh, kidney failures, uh, kidney failure uh, cases in Central America, particularly on the West Coast associated mostly with sugar cane growers. And the uh, odd thing about this particular uh, illness was that it affected young people, basically people from their mid-20s to the mid-40s. Not the usual kind of uh, kidney failure that is normally associated with uh, diabetes and, and, and other diseases, but uh, um, it, it appeared to be associated with improper hydration, and then the question was, uh, is this a, an emerging climate change impact that we're seeing in, in, in Central America because of uh, increase in temperatures and the uh, field workers not being able to, not, not having access to proper hydration. So um, as a result of this meeting in, in, in Aspen a couple of years ago, we, uh, a year and a half ago, we, uh, a, a consortium has been, essentially a bottom-up consortium has been established with, as a partnership between the University of Colorado Health uh, School of Medicine and the University of Colorado regular uh, Boulder campus where a lot of climate science and, and other types of science are, uh, is generated. So at the end uh, of the meeting, uh, like we will have here, you know, uh, they, they, you know, John is looking for some new ideas and I don't know how the, the, the idea came up, but, but that, that's the way it came up and I, I quickly put something together and, uh, you know, sent it to him and in, over time, uh, we've, we've iterated it into the uh, agenda and, and program that you see today. So, um, yeah, I think, the, and, and obviously, everything is being said, the, the, you know, the problems associated with small islands, you know, geography, uh, population, isolation, and, 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 and about the only thing that I can think of, you know, that, that, uh, 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 that might move ourselves forward in terms of being able to get the kind of resources 
that um, you know Chris and, 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 and Nancy have talked about, the, la the lack of access to those resources is some type of agglomeration, you know, a, a partnership, larger numbers of a, 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 some kind of confederation where every where the numbers, uh, the, you know, where, where, where the, the, the sum of the parts is, uh, eventually becomes the greater than the whole. So maybe that's something to, you know, to sort of think about in terms of how you know, it's, n it's not just individual islands, but the whole region, and how can that whole region, you know, w speak with sort of one word, one, one voice. So, anyway, it, you know, that, that's what I have to say. So, thank you.